Akhenaten. And Akhenaten was an ancient Egyptian pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, and he ruled for about 17 years, and he died perhaps around 1336 BCE. He's noted for abandoning the traditional Egyptian polytheistic religion, which is the belief in multiple gods, and he introduces a religion centered on one god, the sun disk god, whose name is Aten. And Akhenaten's name actually means effect for Aten, or Aten is happy. So um, his name prior to that was Amenhotep V, and he was named after his father Amenhotep III, but later he abandons this name in favor of Akhenaten. And the Aten part is the tribute to Aten, the sun disk god. So he's often described as fanatical because his idea of changing a century old religious beliefs that were in place for more than 3000 years was not entirely supported by the Egyptian people. In fact, he moves the capital of Egypt from Thebes to Ramana, which is why when we talk about this time period in ancient Egyptian history, we call it the Ramana period. So he built a new city in Armana in honor of his one and only god, the sun disk god. And this change shook Egypt. Many people did not want to follow in his beliefs. Priests were outraged by this abandonment of the gods. And after he passes away, they try to erase him from history. In fact, his son Tutankhamun plays a role in this. So on top of all these changes, he also creates an ideology where him and his family are gods and they're the only ones who can communicate directly with Aten. So along with changing the religion, he is also noted for influencing a new way of art making. This new way of art making could have been a way for Akhenaten to communicate his individuality to the masses, but there could also be other reasons for this change. So a good example of this artistic change is a sculpture called the Colossal Sculpture of Akhenaten, and it's made of sandstone, and it's about 13 feet high. And if you take a look at the sculpture, right away that you can see that it's broken. This is actually one in a series that were toppled over and buried after his death in an attempt to erase him from history. And this has happened to other pharaohs in the past as well. So this piece still retains that frontal pose that we see in traditional Egyptian royal portraits. And a good example to keep in mind of an ancient Egyptian royal portrait is um, the ancient Egyptian royal portrait of Khafre from the Old Kingdom. And so you can keep that in your mind as an example of 3,000 year old um, traditions of Egypt, right? But either way, Akhenaten is still wearing the traditional pharaoh headpiece um, with the serpent, which is a symbol of Egyptian pharaohs, and he has a false beard. So he still looks somewhat powerful and we can recognize him as a pharaoh. But what's different? His body is really different. So something we don't often see in Egyptian art are rounded forms. And this sculpture is very round in shape. For example, he has curving contours. He appears to have hips and a waist. He has a protruding belly and fatty thighs. His body is sometimes described as feminized or asexual or a mix between the two genders. He has full lips and heavy eyelids as well, which make him look feminine. One thing that stands out to me um, in particular is that he has weak arms. And this is important because we often don't see pharaohs uh, portrayed with weak arms or out of shape bodies. And this is because, especially in the old kingdom, pharaohs were supposed to be portrayed as um, idealized. And even though Akhenaten is portraying himself as a god, his body is still not idealized. So the body is curiously misshapen and people find his look to be mysterious. In fact, some physicians even wonder if um, there was some sort of illness behind his look, and this is what he actually looked like. And we don't actually know that. Um, we do know that his son, Tutankhamun, would die young from complications, and we believe that um, Tutankhamun and Akhenaten could have been products of incest. Um, Akhenaten may have had relations with his sister, along with his wife, Nefertiti, um, uh, because, again, pharaohs had many wives. Um, and then the product 
of Akhenaten and his sister would have been two in common. So others believe that this is some sort of a signature style or a way for Akhenaten to appear different than other pharaohs. So Akhenaten was not necessarily supposed to fall into the role of a pharaoh, but when he does become pharaoh, he elevates everyone in his family to a godlike status, including his mother, which he has um, artwork made of her being portrayed as a goddess. And finally, perhaps this is a representation of Aten, the sun disk god, who was sexless, perhaps had no gender, and Akhenaten is just portraying himself as this genderless figure, Aten. 